Yo. Huh. Aubrey Edwards, Tony Shivani. We bout to party. We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up. Hey everybody, welcome to AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling. Like in the video version, I'm cheering, cheers and coffee. Like cheers, like it's a, cheers. Hey, Why Alex, not? what's up? It's never a wrong time. It's well, never hello, wrong. Aubrey. It's Thanks for having me. I'm on the Pacific Northwest. Excited. I'm already on the third cup. So there we go. I was, <laughs> I was just about to ask you, how many cups in are you? That's always the the, the first question we've got to get right off the bat. Oh, man, especially after those East Coast flights, that first like two hours awake, I'm like, oh, I'm a dead person. So I'll, I'll get there eventually. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. I'm already starting to wake up because I'm excited about our guest today. Who, yeah, how who can is... you not be? Me too. Oh Who's the guest? I know. Jeez. Um, let me excited. let me introduce this guy. Who is that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> joining us with his super professional setup <laughs> in his living room is uh, Kip Sabian. How are you, buddy? I'm, I'm, I'm very good. I like that we said in my living room. Uh, this is actually my parents' in-laws' basement right now. I, you, I they didn't need to it. know. I, I like it. That's pretty sweet. I can't lie to you. Now we're here, <laughs> finally, after, what has it it's been? It's unrestricted. Three, three? When did you do the first one of these? It was like January 2020, like right before the pandemic. So like three wow. three years ago. Right. Like we wanted to have you on. Years, after three years of waiting, I, I, I can't. I can't lie to you. I gotta be Look, honest. I already took shit from Jericho to for taking too long. So I don't want <laughs> to take shit from you, man. I know, I know, I know. I, so so full disclosure, like we wanted to have you on earlier, but you were sort of in busy. the transition yeah. of this character. Uh-huh. So yeah. it was like, okay, let's let's just wait until like you come back officially and debut and do all these things and then we can we can talk about it. I again. feel like that would have been a very a very weird a very weird interview if you'd have caught me mid mm-hmm. mid mid box crowd box phase. Yeah. I feel like yeah, that would have been be... an awkward. It would have just been me sitting here with a box on my head for God knows Very how muffled. long without responding. Yes. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> would have been like a Danhausen episode. Like, what the hell is happening here? <laughs> well, it is my pleasure to finally be here. Yes, I'm so excited to have you. You're one of the OGs of AEW in the mm-hmm. very first match ever. We got to we got to share that yep. that honor a little bit. You won the first match ever at AEW. We Which did. Is incredible. Me and you did. We technically, did. we did. We did. Both Me and you and that twenty dollars. <laughs> we did. <laughs> no one can take that from us. It's mine. No one can take and yours that forever. Yeah. I mean, you can only be the first in wrestling so many times, right? That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's so, a great point. You guys own that. Yeah. We we own that. We, no one can take that from us. Where's my plaque? Anyway, so let's. I'd like my plaque. <laughs> can we get a little plaque? They make plaques yeah. for everything in wrestling. Can we get a plaque? Uh-huh. <laughs> Alex probably has a plaque. Look at the background. He definitely has a plaque. No, no, no plaques here. here. No plaques plaque here. Somewhere. See, so Alex needs a plaque, so we got to make uh-huh. this happen. Yeah, well, let's there do we it. Go. All we'll right, yeah. It so let's get into it. Oh my god, let's I love it. the chit chat to start this, but yeah, there's so much to talk about today. So you, you, you came in, Kip Sabian, great run, get injured, and now you're doing this box on the head thing <laughs> in the crowd underrated and over it talk about the the idea of coming back returning with a box on your head and just this full character change that you went through that, that's probably the best place to start i think that's, yeah that works. <laughs> it's a big uh, one I, so it's a really hard one because the original idea that i had has changed so many times depending on the reactions from the fans so the initial starting point was obviously I got injured, um, had to have uh, full labral surgery, which took longer than it normally would have been because when they got in there, they found that it was torn all the way around. Ooh. So I was looking at, you know, 12 ish months, maybe 12 to 15 months um, of rehab. And for me, as someone that's wrestled since I was 16, so like I'm 30 now. So by that point, it'd been like 11 years, 12 years, like a a really good chunk of my life wrestling nonstop. And I think the longest I'd had away from wrestling was maybe three weeks in all of that Mm -hmm. time. Wow. Because I did a lot of the holiday camp shows with wrestling. So you're wrestling five, six times a week, plus the indie shows. So it was a lot of wrestling. So having this break and being told, hey, you're not going to wrestle for 12 12 months is is kind of soul-destroying. Especially so during home, the pandemic, exactly. where there's not mm. really a lot of wrestling happening anyway. Exactly. So I'm 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 sitting at home, and it was just it was straight after surgery, maybe the first week after surgery, and I'm sitting on my couch because I can't sleep in my bed because I have to sit 
set up with a big old sling on. And I'm watching the show and I'm like, man, I don't want to stay at home for 12 months and do nothing. That's terrible. And here's the thing. AEW is so great with the talent that mm. I could have literally sat at home for those 12 months. Fine. No issues mm -hmm. whatsoever. Still getting paid. Treat me well. Help me out with my uh, rehab and all of this stuff. But me, I couldn't do it. So I started to go crazy. I was watching the show, which I honestly, I think watching the show every week. Now I look back, it was a good thing. Back then, I think it was a bad thing for me because I had such a long time to like wrestle again that I'm watching it and it's making me go more and more down this, 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 this hole, this dark hole. And it wasn't long before I realized, man, I'm, 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 I'm depressed right now. This is, this mm -hmm. is terrible. I need to do something. I have a very artistic mind, which I think comes from the fact that I, and again, I talk about this all the time on my uh, Twitch stream, uh, as someone who has a pretty high functioning ADHD, uh, I, I'm always having to try and find things to be creative with. I'm a big fan of the acting ability of Shia LaBeouf. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a stunt that Shia did where it was for the red carpet of, I think it was Nymphomaniac was the movie. And he turned up on the red carpet with a bag on his head that said, I'm not famous anymore. And he just stood there silently and it was like life art. And I remember at the time <laughs> I was like, this is, this is great. I don't understand it, but I like it. So then I did a more of a deep dive into Shire and what he was doing with this like uh, this like life art stuff. And I was like, man, that's that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll do that. Fast forward, I'm planning this the, the, this serial killer esque character. This this I'm a big fan of Halloween as well. I like Mike Myers. Ooh. These shots that they use in Halloween, I think, is some of the greatest. Uh, in, in, in my mind, it's the greatest horror movie of all time for simplicity reasons only, that all of the, the the fear that you have is from a background shot of a dude just standing there. They can't see him, but we can see him. I love stuff like that. I was like, man, what if I could do this? And then we get to All Out 2021, I believe. I packed a suit. I'm like, I'm going to go and buy a, bo a, a bag for my head. And then I'm going to stand there and I'm going to do my own meet and greet. So I printed out a bunch of like old pictures of myself that I was crossing the face out of. Mm-hmm. Shane, the driver, good old Shane. Mm -hmm. good old Shane, Shane was driving me to the meet and greet. And I'm like, oh, can we find a place to get a, a, a brown paper bag? It's like, yeah, sure. So we trial these places. Nowhere has a brown paper bag. I'm like, I've literally come here now <laughs> to do this random life art stunt to see if it works. <laughs> and I now don't have anything for my head. Oh, so no. last ditch effort, we go into UPS. And I go into UPS and I'm like, hi, I need a box that will fit a human head. <laughs> I'm sure that went over well. <laughs> and she goes, <laughs> we're gonna put Gwyneth Paltrow in it. Literally, she just laughs. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, can I, do you have a box that'll fit a human I, head? I, or sorry, prior to that, I said, do you have a bag? They said, no, so I said, so I settled for a box. Mm -hmm. She goes, um, maybe this one. So she like weirdly passes me the box and I like put it together. And then I'm like, and I put it on my head and I'm like, this will work. That's great. She's like, okay. I'm, I'm like, hi. So, do you have any like tape? And she's like, yeah, sure. So she yeah. passed me the oh, tape. Oh god. Like, the top <laughs> on. And I'm like, oh, do you have a box cutter? <laughs> and she's looking at me now, like, what is this guy planning on doing with a box to fit a human head? And now he wants she... a box cutter. He's like, she's really wondering what's going on. Don't she's making not, notes I'm in case she's suited. got to file a I'm, police report. I'm in a suit and tie as well. So like, I'm in this burgundy suit asking for a box that'll fit a human head. So they pass me the box cutter. I go over to the thing and I cut two really random eye holes. Like, I hope this will work. Boom, I give it. I, I pay for the box. I get back in the car. I've got some Sharpies. And Shane's like, I guess you're going for a box then. I was like, I guess I am. I'm like, man, what can I write on this box? So I'm like, okay, Shia had, I'm not famous anymore. So I was like, oh, I can put, I'm not over anymore. And then I had a self-realization of, you know what? I wasn't really that over anyway. So I don't think writing that, I, I'm already working out the jokes that can come back at me from this. So I'm like, okay. It's almost so like how you've been on really, Twitter before. How do I really feel? <laughs> how do I really feel? And I was like, do you know what? I feel like I'm 
severely underrated in the world of wrestling on a grand scale. And you know what? I've had enough. So I literally wrote underrated and then I was like, I'm over it. And I wrote it. Boom. And then I like colored in the eyes a little bit and I'm like, yeah, I'll just doodle all over it. So I like wrote back on the back of the box, which is hilarious because that was 21 and I didn't come back till like not that long ago. So I was, I was back for a long time, I guess. But um, yeah, so that's where it started. I did that and it seemed to get over and I was being weird and wacky and I was ultra skinny at that point because I was just post-surgery. I think I'd dropped 20 pounds nearly. And it just grew from there. It, 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 every time I was doing shows, AEW would bring me out to shows and I would go out before the show and I would set up these random meet and greets and I'd wander around and I slowly went from being outside the venue to inside the venue to inside the arena to sitting in the like the further back rows to like moving my way forwards as time went on and it was one of those wonderfully organic things where i didn't know what was going to happen and i i feel like tony as well didn't know what was going to happen at all it was just one of these like okay kip can't do anything but i didn't want to be stagnant i wanted to develop myself further and to do that, I had to do something creative. So that's where this came from. And uh, yeah, now we're at the point that it's changed so many times that I love it. I feel like I'm some weird DC campy villain. And I, I dig it. I dig it completely. I love it. Yeah, uh -huh. I remember uh, doing commentary and not knowing whether that was you or not. <laughs> because it was just a guy in a box. And I was like, is that Kip? Does anybody that know was, is that Kip? That was... That was the beauty of it was that even the commentary team as well on on uh, English and Spanish commentary, no one really knew what to say because it wasn't that this was an angle. This was like an Easter egg, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's one of those awkward things, especially for you, because I don't envy your job at that point, because like there's camera shots where I'm going to be honest, I deliberately placed myself perfect camera like in the background like this was a setup like. There was there was one with Adam there was one with Adam Cole where it looks like I'm deliberately set up on the guardrail to like set up a feud. There was one with Punk as well where he's cutting a promo and there's mm -hmm. me looking over his shoulder. So for you guys, I don't envy you for having to I kind of ignore that to be honest because you can't bring something up that isn't you know being done. But it, it was interesting because it built this kind of mystique and we were trying to figure out okay what's going on here what's mm -hmm. what's going to happen uh and then obviously it evolved from there and then you kind of i guess no pun intended embrace this catchphrase embrace the change can you yes. tell us a little bit about that so um as i lightly went over with during the box period i was and i'm i'm always open about talking about it i was very i was very depressed at this point um and there wasn't really when i wasn't doing stuff for this this character development like i treated it as if it was a movie role so i went very method acty for a few hours per day trying to get in this headspace um i always enjoy that kind of thing um and it was almost like there was a point of realization where i was like okay i've changed now i can't go back to what i used to do because it just doesn't feel right mm -hmm. And I know it. It was. It was. It was needing a a, a catchphrase of some sort. Um, the underrated over it is 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 cool, but it's not. I didn't see long term in that because uh, you, you can't, can't be underrated forever. Like uh, yeah, eventually it's like you you can't say you're underrated for the what. Let's say you know twenty 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 five. We'll say five. 2025, Kip Sabian, AEW champion, underrated over it. Well, he's not underrated anymore, is he? Like, mm -hmm. it makes no sense. Right. And and I don't know where I heard it, but it was just in passing. Someone just said, uh, I just got to embrace the change, man. And I was like, Ugh, that's that's it. Like, <laughs> yes, I, I definitely will. And I'm going to use this as a catchphrase from now on. So I started writing it on my little eight by tens. And then it went from writing it on eight by tens to like signing it on on Twitter and stuff. And then it was, you know, I didn't even ask for it. But then when I made the return and it said embrace the change on the Titans run, I was like, well, there we go. We're sold, done. Happy it's days. there. There we go. Um, yeah, but it's had this profound meaning as well to a lot of like my fans, which I feel like this box gimmick, as we'll call it, 
that phase got its cult, its own little cult following, which I love. Um, I thought it was really cool because it was an underground following that wasn't really part mm. of the show. It was like what you're saying. It was one of these like you don't know how to react. And I had a bunch of people reach out to me that were going through a lot of uh, personal traumas themselves. And without me even realizing it, the lines that I was writing down, because it was very real to me, things like uh, time doesn't heal, it changes you. I still believe that. I don't feel like time heals at all. I, I feel that's a, that's a farce because you, you never truly heal. Mm. You, you evolve, you change. You so adapt. it was that like that, that embracing that change that one of uh, uh, one of my fans got a tattoo of the box that says time doesn't heal. It changes you. Wow. Because awesome. she was going for a really hard time. And that phrase helped her like, no, it's true. It's, it's, it's the change. I'm moving forwards. So for me, it's it's been this really cool vibe of real life combining with this this character. Um, I absolutely love it. And I'm sure that there is more to talk about here on AEW Unrestricted coming up with Kip Sabian. It's Alex and Aubrey, and we are back here at Unrestricted with our very special guest, the guy that we've been looking forward to talking to for a long time. And he's got a lot to say. He's a very busy man. Lots of creativity going on. Kip Sabian, welcome back. And, lots of creativity uh, at this time in the morning. I'm ready. Right. Oh, you're this always time in the creative. morning, it's like 11 for you, Mr. Pennsylvania. That's 11. That's morning to me. That's still morning. <laughs> it's still morning. It's morning for wrestlers. <laughs> with, with, our, yeah, it's travel, with our travel schedule and what times we get home, it's mm -hmm. it's my morning. <laughs> we should be sleeping right now. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So let's talk about your return because I got a bone to pick yes. with you, buddy. I know. I'm Attacking sorry, Pac. I know. Come on. For oh, the All-Atlantic Championship. I was there at ringside. All of a sudden, I see you. Get involved. Shame, 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 mister. So tell us how that came to be, please. I told you it was nothing personal at the time, but, you know, <laughs> it was definitely partially uh, partially, per partially personal. That's a hard one to say. Yeah, you're a liar. Partially personal. Personal. Yeah, so uh -huh. um, the gimmick. So the gimmick was getting to the point that, as I said, it had this, like, cult following behind it. Um, that every show there was... Uh, a bunch of clips and pictures being posted of like, you know, me in the background of all these shots. And I think at the time, because we didn't really know what we were going to do with the gimmick, we knew that there was going to be some, like Tony knew that he wanted to do some kind of jump from the audience. We didn't know how we were going to do it. And it got to that point that like, there was no real, like full direction on where it was going to go. And then Tony had this idea of like, yo, you've been doing this thing in the crowd. Pax wrestling in England. Are you able to go to England for one of his title defenses and sit in the crowd Dope. there? Mm. I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. Like, I love free trip this... home. Hell yeah. Exactly. And I mean, <laughs> right? this is something that's going to be, you know, a title defense that's that's from Rev Pro that is going to be thrown on AEW Dark. But it, it, it had such a cool idea of, you know, how weird is it that he's wrestling in England and here I am, someone that's only been seen in the US. So a lot of people didn't think it was me. They thought that it was just someone that I got to put a box on their head and, and go stand in the crowd, which I wanted it to be. I wanted people to question that. So yeah, so I go to England, I fly there, I go backstage, I see all my old buddies, it's great. And uh, Andy from Rev Pro just sits me out in the crowd and I, I sit down and people are like, this is a bit weird. Like some people had, had got it. They're like, oh, that's, that's what Kip's been doing on, uh, on AEW. And then Pat gets out of the ring, walks around to me, and we have a moment. And at that point, everyone goes, oh, this is actually real. This isn't just a random dude here. So he had that mm -hmm. moment there, which then transpired to uh, Dynamite, where we ended up doing the actual jump finally, which I feel like I wanted to bring this up because I think it's gone under the radar for how, how great it was. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toot, toot mine and Tony's horn here. So, Do it. So... Again, I'm a big fan of uh, Halloween movies, uh, horror movies. I'm also a big comic book fan. I'm a big fan of like comic book villains. And one of those being the Riddler, one of those being the Joker, mm. those mm. The, the Green Goblin. Good choices. Like, just, just, you know, very, you know, um, unstable characters, should we say. Um, and I always feel that the scariest type of human is not the one that says, I'm going to kill you. 
it's the one who will sit there and just, you know, everything's calm and fine, but in two seconds time, I'm going to bite your nose off, but you don't know it's coming. <laughs> you know, that to me is way scarier. You know, there's a scene in the dark night with the Joker where he puts the, the pencil down and is like, I'm going to make this pencil disappear. And you're like, this guy's, this guy's a weirdo. And then he just slams some dude's head and ta-da. Like that to me is way scarier than someone running at me with a machete or something, you know? So we, we managed to get one of the extras to who would fit in my suit. So I went out, did my meet and greet like I normally would. So everyone saw the red suit and they're like, okay, that's Kip. You can tell. Because if you get close enough, you can see it's me. He puts my suit on. I scribble some eyeliner on, which I love, by the way. Finally, I get to live my 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 Chemical Romance emo kid oh, dream dear. of wearing <laughs> eyeliner as a profession. Um, I put tape over his mouth like he'd been kidnapped. I, oh. gave him, I gave him a black eye. He was totally fine to take the black eye. He, you know, he just wanted his, his time on TV, so I punched him in the face. Gave him a good one. <laughs> um... You know, oh, the for, things the, we for do the for job, work. the things we do for this job. So mm -hmm. he, so he took a punch <laughs> to the face, and on the, on the, on the tape, and this is where it, it said "behind you," right? Mm. So finally, Pat goes over to, to me in the crowd, and he takes the box off, and it's not me; it's some dude with a black eye with "behind you" written on tape. And then here I come, and I jump him, and we do the, the Eric Cannon, as I like to call it, the the Eric Cannon move. Got to give props to Eric Cannon for that one. Uh, oh, yeah. The Eric Cannon on the outside, and we have that, that boom, finally, we've done something. Because for so long, people were just waiting for it to happen. And it had taken so long, I think the steam was starting to like die off from it. Because it's like, this is never going to happen. And then we got them at that point. Um, I love Wrestling Pack. I've always loved Wrestling Pack. I wrestled he's him so in the good. UK a bunch of times. He's, he's so good. He's mm -hmm. so good. So for me, I was like, okay, the perfect person to come back in that i know that we can have a good match is gonna be packed like if you're gonna wrestle anyone it's gonna be it's gonna be a kenny it's gonna be a pack it's gonna be these you know phenomenon wrestlers um so yeah it, it was it was great we we had a fun match so i got to i was still testing the character out at this point that's the that's the crazy thing is that i didn't i wasn't really set on it on anything at this point like there was one thing in that match with pack where I hit him with something and I just went to the crowd and I was like, you know, like, ah, and I saw people go, yeah. And I was like, uh, yeah, uh, ah, and I was like, oh, and now I do that as like a regular thing that mm -hmm. just came organically from that match with Pac. So yeah, I'm very, I'm very grateful we had that. It was, uh, it, it, it was good fun. I would have liked to have, have beat him. That would have been nice, you know, to, to, to get that all Atlantic title. title. Uh, but I got a second chance at the All Atlantic title. I did, uh, which I lo I lost as well. So uh, okay. time to move on to other titles, Kip. I think. Oh, that's third the time's the charm. <laughs> third time's the charm. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, that's at true. Right yeah, now, you know, that's a good way to look it's at lucky it. Lucky number three. Things come in threes. Know. It's wrestling. Things come in threes. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's it's a, oh man. It's like we're predicting the future here on yeah, AEW really Unrestricted. Is. It really is. It really is. I, I mean, we're we're predicting a hopeful future. I don't yes. know. I. I love you, and I'm like, you better win a title one point or another no, because I feel like you deserve it. And like the amount of thought put into this character is just yeah, really insane, cool. and I love it. And it's it's so very wrestling that like we're not sure where it's going to go. And I thought about these old things, and then you see what hits, and you're like, okay, we're going in this direction. Yeah, and you just yeah, have to it's... you have to embrace the change. It's almost like it's look at that. <laughs> well, well it's like, I've always I've always said that, and I think it took me a long time to really realize this. And it made me love wrestling even more, which I didn't think was possible. But wrestling, it is an art form. But not it's easy to say, oh, yeah, wrestling's art. Yeah, that's great. But, like, it really, truly is. Like, Absolutely. The, Performing the undertones, arts. The, what you can achieve through wrestling is different. There's nothing else on planet Earth that you can achieve so many different variables that you can with wrestling. Because we, we, we've got so many ways to tell stories. And it's the and you can add tiny little nuances that you don't really get the time to do in a TV show or a movie. Because we have yeah. such a long... It, it's, it's an ongoing show. It never, it never ends. I mean, fingers crossed, it never ends. So you can continuously add these little things in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And, and I yeah, know the, that... The art is definitely a big thing for me right now. The art's a big thing. And I know that you're, you're making... 
you know, the the Shia LaBeouf thing was like a huge like method acting. Yes. Uh, all of these things that kind of like build to a character. And one of the things we talk about in wrestling a lot is real life events happening in your life and how that ends up building your character. And I know you were talking a little bit about like the pr- depression you were feeling with the, mm-hmm. the injury and everything. But I think there was there was other stuff going yes. on in your life as well. So that's something that I wanted to bring up as well. Um, by th- the time that this, we're literally waiting for it to be to be uploaded right now. But by the time that we drop this episode, it will already be out. Yeah. Um, I don't want to go too much into detail because I don't feel like it's something for me to really go into the full details of. I feel like that's something for Penelope to do. Um, or Olivia, obviously. Hmm. It's so weird. It's so weird to call her Penelope. It's very- Anytime you don't call her <laughs> Liv, I'm like, weird. who the hell are you? Yeah, that was weird for me here, too. I do it on stream as well. It's like, it's very strange when I say, I call her Penelope instead, so I can at least add Penelope. some flair to it. Um, <laughs> I love it. But um, we... I, I was going through a pretty rough patch with not being able to wrestle. Um, I felt... And at the time... Now I understand differently. We have such a large roster, okay? There's a lot of wrestlers. There's only a certain amount of TV time. There's only a certain amount of things we can do. And Tony has all of these guys that are all of these pieces of this puzzle. You can't always have these people in the picture. That's why everything has... Because we've got so many. And it's, it's the way that wrestling is. It's the way the stories go. But as an individual wrestler, that's very hard. Because all I think about is my character and Liv's character and progression through wrestling because I didn't get into wrestling to, you know, get a job, sit back, get a nice cushy paycheck and then just retire one day and be like, well, I managed to make some money doing this. No, I got into wrestling to continuously develop to get to the top. That's the whole point of wrestling. So I was in a pretty bad place at that point where um, I didn't see the pack return. I didn't see the return. I was just you know, in limbo at this point. And then me and Olivia got pregnant. And it was like a light in this situation. But we were very, we were very nervous about it. Um, So I will go into details about this situation. But so we finally go in to talk to Tony. No one knows. The only person that knows is Doc because, uh, you know, as soon as we found out, she can't wrestle. You gotta have to tell Doc. You have to tell (laughs) Doc. Yeah. So it has to be a reason that she can't wrestle right now. You know, you can't just not wrestle. So we tell Doc, okay, cool. We go and tell Tony and we are so nervous because, you know, you're going into your boss to say, hi, uh, she's not going to be able to wrestle for a a year or so, maybe longer now. Um, How do you feel about that? So we went in and we, hi, Tony, we just got some news to tell you. And the second we told him, if you've seen Tony Khan on an AEW stage, when a talent has debuted and they come Mm -hmm. up the ramp and he is so excited and so happy and he just jumps and hugs them. Mm -hmm. That is the moment that we had in Tony's office with Tony. He was, that's great. He he had papers in his hand for the show. He threw the papers and just came over and was so excited. And he was like, Uh, whatever you need, however long you need support you. And we were like, Oh, weight lifted. Now we can get excited. So we got very excited. Um, and then unfortunately for us, um, at about 10 weeks or so, um, we lost the baby, Mm -hmm. um, which for me was very hard for two reasons. One, we'd got really excited about the fact that we can have a baby because we've always wanted children. We just didn't Mm -hmm. know with wrestling how we'd make that fit, but we'd worked out the time frame and the fact that we have such a supportive family um, in Olivia's family that we would still be able to work our schedule and you know two days a week we're gone we come back you know family life so we we were really getting into it and then it was actually when we were traveling to tv one day when we got in the car bags in the car we we got in the car and then it happened and Mm. i had to call bryce straight away for travel and be like dude we can't make it in this week i'll i'll tell you later it's a personal emergency he's like okay cool i'll let everyone know and the hardest part of it was not the fact that I'm sitting here going, man, I was ready to be a dad. And like, you know, we're about nearly three months in 
of being prepared to be a dad and now I'm not going to be a dad. Mm -hmm. It was, I am so worried for Olivia right now. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't just the fact that we'd lost the baby, which, and I, I, I said this to you before, like off this uh, uh, podcast, I said this before, how I had no idea how common it was. You mm -hmm. hear about it, but I had no idea that one in four pregnancies end in a miscarriage. And I, yep. the, the few friends that I've told about this, I've been flabbergasted the amount of people that have said back to me, oh yeah, we, we had three before we had our first. And I had no idea. And I feel like it's mm -hmm. something, the reason that I wanted to bring it up is I feel like it's something that shouldn't be a taboo topic to talk about. Like, I right. feel like people should know that it's common. You're not alone. Because that was the hardest thing for Olivia as well, was that she felt alone in it. That like, why has this happened to me? And it's not happened to other people. But then she managed to find, you know, other people that have been through the same situations. And that kind of helped us a bit. But gimmickly for me that that went even further because the gimmick at that point was i was you know i know there's certain ways the only way that i can explain it is that my character was was crazy would be the term that i would use and i mean that from a um not from a disrespectful manner but from a my character artistic. was an artistic yeah it was it was it was comic book so having real trauma like that also come in with how i was feeling with not being back on tv yet it just all came into one thing and I needed something as a, as an outlet. And that's where I really put everything into the character. Wow. But for us now, we were, we've, we've kept it to ourselves. Um, not for like trying to hide it, but I know from Olivia's perspective as well is we'd, we'd asked, um, Tony to, you know, not release what had happened because we were processing that. And, you mm -hmm. know, we just came up with the, the fact or they came up with the fact that, that she's, she's injured, which is, is fine. It's, it's normal. Her, her heart's but, injured. <laughs> but all of the questions that we had and we couldn't answer them because it wasn't mm -hmm. just the fact that we lost the baby. Olivia also had a, um, it's called a fibroid. They're really common mm -hmm. in, in, in most females. They're just there in the uterus. Mm -hmm. They just sit there dormant. No issues. When she got pregnant, the hormones that then, you know, change made the fibroid grow. Mm -hmm. By the time mm -hmm. that we had our miscarriage, it was the size of a cantaloupe. Mm -hmm. oh my so gosh. she had this huge growth that was like sticking out. Like it looked like a bump. We thought we were having mm -hmm. twins for a long time because of that. You know, like because it was that big. So she then had to go through the surgery of having that removed, which, you know, that's terrible. Yeah. You know, not only have you lost this, this, this life, but now you have to go through surgery and rehab and recovery as if you'd had a, basically a C-section, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, so for her, that was really hard. It's got to the point now that we, we, we look at the silver lining, which is, in my mind, this fibroid had always been there and they can cause complications when they get to that size. So I look at it as this baby sacrificed itself to make us aware of this mm. fibroid so the wow. fibroid could be removed. So when we get pregnant again in the future, complications are gone. So wow. like that's how we've tried to look at it. And for me, that I can't speak on her behalf. But from my perspective of everything, that definitely gives me this, like, you know, hope from that. Um, that's, that's really, I mean, it's, it's a traumatic thing to go through. Yeah. But I do appreciate you sharing your story. Yeah, um, thank you. And no, I, I mean, like, as you said, it's so common, but there's a stigma, much like there's been a stigma with talking about depression. There's a stigma talking about miscarriage when it is so incredibly common. Yeah. So I appreciate you sharing your story. I appreciate you being open about it. And I know there's going to be a lot of people who are very appreciative of it, especially talking about it as your perspective from a husband who is supportive. Yeah. And I know that there's like that helplessness that you feel of like, what can I do? Oh my God, my wife might be dying. Like, oh this God. is crazy, right? Yeah. And it like, was like, there was nothing. It's that point where, what can I really say? Mm -hmm. Cause, and I said to her the other day, cause we were talking about it. Um, when we were filming this video, like before we started filming it, um, we were talking about it. And I said, you know what 
I felt so guilty to feel like, cause it, it took me a long time to process because I felt guilty about being, um, about, about grieving mm -hmm. because I didn't feel like I had the right to grieve at that point because of what she mm. was going through. Wow. So I felt like my job was to keep her supportive and try and look at positives continually as opposed to just sitting there myself and grieving. So it took a long yeah. time for us to get to that point. But yeah, I feel like a lot of people, um, should know like you're not alone in they those should. scenarios and it's not something that you need to keep as a taboo topic you know i also like yeah. that you have like you've taken all these negatives and you've turned them into positives both like in your personal life in in wrestling building your character on it and it's just really really good and i great i love that you have such a great outlook on it and this has been a fantastic conversation so far. I know yes. we've got more coming up after the break here on AEW Unrestricted. This is AEW Unrestricted, Aubrey and Alex talking to Kip Sabian. We've touched on a lot of topics about wrestling and character mm -hmm. growth and growth as human beings and growth in marriage and all of these uh, wonderful things that we've been open about, that Kip's been open about, and it's it's wonderful. But let's let's kind of pick it up a little bit and... Bring uh, bring some fan questions into this mix, which is oh absolutely great. Yeah, I love when, I love when people are part. like, oh my God, it's so good. So good. Awesome. First question from John K. If you could lead a stable of wrestlers, past or present, who would you choose? Oh, Ooh, good or question. Present? Oh, that's, right? Damn, that's unfair. There's there's too many, <laughs> there's too many options. And I get to lead them? You do. Oh, yeah. boy. Like your I mean, army of boxhead guys. Oh, man, that's... <laughs> That's that's a that's a tricky one. Do you know what I would have? Do you know what I'd love to do though? I'm, I'm going to be mm. honest. I I am a huge I am a huge Motor City Machine Gun fan. I always have been. Oh, I've said mm. this. I've said this a bunch of times. Here's a little little tidbit for everyone. So, my name Kip Sabian. My original wrestling name was Jet. When I had my first match, they asked what I wanted to be called. I said Jet. They said sorry we already have a jet what do you want to be called and i was like oh mm. what so i was like okay uh oh i don't know just give me any name give me any name because it's my first match you know i don't care didn't think about it so i was it was soraya because it was her family mm. that i trained with and it was their their show and obviously my nickname as a kid has always been kip it's just always been kip so she knew me as kip so it was like she just said oh just call him just call him kip okay cool so I was I was Kip Jones for my first match. Kip oh, Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Kip Jones. Yeah. Taz would Mr. love that. Jones. Call him Dr. Jones. Um, so it was Kip Jones. And then straight away I was like, that is terrible. It it is basically a <laughs> Kip James ripoff here. Um yeah. so I had that for a little bit, and then I was a big Chris Sabin fan. And my Facebook name as a 16-year-old, 17-year-old was was my real name with Sabin in the middle in parentheses because you know I was cool back then. Mm, um, we all were. So I, I I remember Zach and uh, Ricky Knight coming up to me going, "Yo, we're gonna change your name." And I'm like, "Okay, cool, let's do it." And they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna call you Kip Sabin." And I was like, "That's so cool! I love mostly machine guns. This is awesome." Bearing in mind, I don't really know much about the wrestling world in terms of the longevity of this name right now. So I wrestled as Kip Sabin for a while. And then when I started to break out more, I'm like, oh, no, I've literally just stolen Chris Sabin's name. I can't have this. So I needed yeah. to come up with a change. So I, I went to France and I wrestled there and I won a title in France. And I came back and I said, you know, this is a new era for me. I, uh, I, I went to France. I won this title. They couldn't pronounce my surname. So they called me Kip Sabian. And you know what? I'm going to stick with that. So from now on, I'm Kip Sabian. And I managed to change it like that, which is there you a go. complete lie. They did not get the name wrong or anything like this. But I needed a way out of it. So that's where Kip Sabian came from. So it was, it was originally wow. Kip Sabian. So Motor City Machine Guns, huge fan. Put me with the Motor City Machine Guns. That's what I want. I Man. can see that. What a, what a great butcher, answer. Blade and Bunny. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There yeah, you, go. you got the Butcher Blade idea. Bunny. There there we go. They are amazing. Can I say, I want to make sure I say this, because I said this the other day on uh, uh, virtual signing. Um, the, butcher, uh, the Butcher and the Blade are, in my eyes, one of the most underrated tag teams in television wrestling, period. 100% agree. They can do anything you need them to do. Mm -hmm. They are one of the most versatile teams they 
they deserve and and I hope they get their big their big run because those guys are ama- and they're such nice guys especially oh, they're so selfless during my injury a, a lot of the guys backstage really kept me alive um in terms of positivity and you know butcher and blade were pivotal in that as well for just keeping me like every show blade would come out and he even i was on the phone with him yesterday and he's he said to me remember what you did in the crowd for all all those months and you were traveling to tv there was nothing really there for you and you made this yourself like you should be proud of like he always reminded me be proud of this this is great like i'm those guys are amazing, and I really hope yeah. they get their they get their their big their their big moment. Yeah, sooner rather yeah. than later. Sorry, and you guys seem to compliment each other so well. I love you know. Guys. At first, it was like, well, wait a second, because we know that Penelope and the Bunny had been together on TV for quite a while, and they yeah. had really great like chemistry. And then adding you to the mix, it made perfect sense. Yeah, it was it, it was very much uh, by association. We we had to have something there. Now, does that mean that we are a a a a unit? Uh, I don't know. Well, I, trios I, titles. I mean, just I mean, saying. That's very true. That's very true. Tony, book this now, sir. There you book go. It. On there. Yeah, book, book it, it Tony. Book it. Book it. Yeah. That triangle doesn't hold the trios titles anymore. You can. Oh, I know. Yeah, I hope <laughs> you get them. Take them now, Alex. You and Butcher and Blade. Now he's supported. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, yeah. Alex. Stamp of approval. That. <laughs> that's what I'm going to go. I, I, I'm going to tell Tony. Tony, you are going to have to win the titles. Alex said. There Alex you go. Said Alex says, not Penta Alex says, said Alex says, we're going for the trios titles. <laughs> All right, so we got another question for you here, Kip, from Dr. Scott Kelly. Shout out to Dr. Scott. What is your Hogwarts house of choice? Slytherin. And this, it's not by choice. It's not by choice. Every time I've done Pottermore, I've got Slytherin. Uh, you just get sorted I'm, I'm that a way. Slytherin through and through. Always have been. You know, Voldemort's my boy. You For know, life. There it is. Tongue that. Castle tongue that. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, I know I know you're a big Twitch streamer, so I, I feel like I have to ask this question <laughs> from from Ash. Top five video games of all time. Uh, number one, Bugs Bunny and Taz Lost in Time. Good Ooh. one. One of the best two-player games. Me and my brother used to play it continuously. Um, uh, these are not in order, just five that I can think of. Uh, the original Gears of War, again, I'm a big couch co-op guy. That, for me, was, was a change in the landscape. Uh, Resident Evil 2. Uh, Good one. Call of Duty 4 and probably Wind Waker. I love Ocarina of Time, Ooh. but Wind Waker was my, that was my jam. I love the artwork in Wind Waker. It really got me. Wind Waker doesn't get the love it does. And That's on top so of good. that, like streaming uh, boat sailing without loading was so unheard of at the time. Uh huh. Like true like, open and- world. Was true, open true, world. true open world where like uh-huh. you literally don't look at a loading screen. You're just looking at this massive, amazing ocean. As as a Zelda mark, I'm just like, Wind Waker is so yeah. good and people did not give it the love it needed. It really is. Like I'm still waiting. They did a Wii port for it, but I'm still waiting mm-hmm. for the Switch port because I really want to play it again. But I, I, I recently picked up playing Ocarina of Time again and it's uh, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. Yeah, my husband's playing it and I played it like 18 oh, times. So, so good. that's that's so mine. good. That's mine. Well, Along the thread of uh, the video game conversation, Sammy Giddens wants to know favorite video game protagonist and antagonist. Ooh. Oh, damn it. That's hard. Mm, I know. It's a tough one. <laughs> Alex coming in with the hard ones. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're on the topic of it. And I feel like for me, that's kind of a big one. I mean, I don't know. I think my my favorite character in any video game ever probably has to be I don't know leon kennedy resi 4 mm. i think i i just like it's a good I, one. I like the character um protagonist is a hard one ganon i guess i like ganon maybe yeah that's a that's a hard one I it's a tough one because this this answer would change tomorrow mm-hmm. you know what I, like if you ask me my my favorite you know comic book superhero and villain i'm gonna straight away you know jump in with spider-man and green goblin uh, There's someone actually mind. asking. Uh, yeah, we'll lead into <laughs> that. Agent Agent Twenty Nine, best Superman, uh, best Spider Man comic series. Uh, so I I am not a huge comic book guy, but Christopher Daniels, uh, shout out to to Uncle Daniels. Uh, he 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 put me on with uh, a Marvel Unlimited subscription, so I could go back and find all these comics rather than have to you know buy them individually. Um, I've gone back to the original, uh, the original uh, Spider-Man, 
the amazing spider-man from the i think it was the 60s it started and the 70s is where i'm at i'm in the 70s because my my favorite comic book uh, storyline would probably be the death of gwen stacy uh, oh. and ultimately death of green goblin via that um which is a comic book that I've been constantly on the lookout for every Comic-Con we do, which is Spider-Man 122, I believe, which is the death of Green Goblin, uh, where Spider-Man's standing on the... It's a really iconic comic book front cover. Spider-Man's holding Gwen Stacy in his arms and Goblin's like flying like in the background. Um, it's, it's a very expensive comic, but I think, I think this <laughs> might be the year where I take the plunge. I was saying to, to Liv the other day, I was like, I think I'm going to buy this one. I, I, I've got to buy this one. I was on eBay. Like, I found it on eBay. It's a 9.5 grading. I'm going to buy it. Oh, my God. Um, oh, oh, good luck God. with that. So, so we'll see about that one. But yeah, that's that's probably my favorite, I, I guess, series of comics. I like it. So let's let's shift gears really quick and talk about something that everybody kind of has a question about. Your villainous look, including the newer hair. So I'm going to combine mm. two questions. Yes. One from at Melody and the other one, Ross. So Melody wants to know how long did it take you to dye your hair to go from your former brown to platinum? And then Ross wants to know what's the secret of having the best hair in pro wrestling? Uh, the secret is is genetics, unfortunately. I uh, I was blessed with with wonderful hair genetics. Um, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Granddad. My there my Granddad, my Granddad passed away uh, it's ten years ago now, maybe maybe ten years, maybe five years. Time, time changes. Time changes us all. Um, but he he died with a full head of hair. Wow. My dad has a full head of hair. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that I I get those genetics because my granddad go. on my on my mother's side bald. So I'm really oh, hoping no. I don't get to that point. But yeah. Oh, hair genetics. The time it took was about three months, and by that I mean huh. the person who who dyes my hair. We went back every like three four weeks whatever it was and each time we had to try something different to find out what works for my hair mm -hmm. um we now have it down that i can go in like i went in last week and it's it's she knows exactly the time we're doing what products we're doing to get it there it's a long run but it just takes trial and error basically finding a good hairstylist and time in it time and uh time and error time and error i love it I love it. I've actually just, I mean, I've loved this whole conversation. Thank you, Kip, for joining us today. Just such a good talk. And we finally, finally got you on this podcast. So thank you very much. You, you do, but hey, I it do. makes it easy for us. It's I great do. because it's just like, we just want to learn about you and make sure that you, you uh, are, are, you have the platform you need for everyone else to know how amazingly awesome you are. Indeed. Uh, you can follow Kip on Instagram and Twitter at the Kip Sabian. You can also follow him on Twitch. The yes. Kip Sabian. Yes, you can follow and listen to this podcast, AEW Unrestricted, for free. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. New episodes every Thursday. We have the YouTube videos where you can see all of our lovely homey spaces. Uh, new episodes every Monday. Just search AEW Unrestricted. Dynamite on Wednesday. Rampage on Friday. Elevation on Monday. Dark on Tuesday. We're all over the place. You can watch all these wonderful people, including Alex and Kip Sabian, on all these awesome shows. I am Aubrey Edwards. Thank you for listening to AEW Unrestricted.